welcome to your science classroom and I am your teacher Mambek Regala Darie. How are you today? I'm sure you're excited for our lesson. Come on, let's go! Before we begin with our lesson, please do not forget to click like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more video lessons. Thank you! For our lesson for today, you should be able to locate the earthquake epicenter using triangulation method. Let's start the ball rolling! An earthquake is the sudden release of energy due to very large pieces of rock moving around and against each other. This energy release results in waves traveling through the rock which geologists use to locate earthquakes. The epicenter or epicentrum in seismology is the point on the Earth's surface directly above a hypocenter or focus, the point where an earthquake or an underground explosion originates. Now, let us know first what a seismograph is. A seismograph is an instrument used to detect and record earthquakes. Generally, it consists of a mass attached to a fixed base. During an earthquake, the base moves and the mass does not. The motion of the base with respect to the mass is commonly transformed into an electrical voltage. A seismometer is an instrument that responds to ground motions such as caused by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and explosions. Seismometers are usually combined with a timing device and a recording device to form a seismograph. Now you know! A seismogram is a record written by a seismograph in response to ground motions produced by an earthquake, explosion, or other ground motion sources. By analyzing seismograms, scientists are able to record three types of seismic waves. P waves, S waves, and surface waves. P waves are primary waves have the greatest velocity and will reach a seismogram first. S waves are secondary waves, move slower, and are observed after the P waves. The time that passes between P waves and S waves helps scientists in determining the epicenter or the location on the surface above which an earthquake originated. Now how to locate the earthquake epicenter using triangulation method? Triangulation determines the location of earthquakes using distance information from three seismic stations. First, prepare the materials. In this activity, you will be using a drawing compass, a ruler, and a Philippine map. Using the seismograms, Determine the arrival time of the P wave and S wave for each station. Record the measurements in the data table. We have three seismic stations, Batangas, Cagayan de Oro, and Puerto Princesa. Here is seismogram A for Batangas. Take note that P wave is the first wave detected by a seismograph followed by S wave. And we have the time in seconds on the x-axis. So here is the P wave and the S wave. So the hypothetical P wave for Batangas is 8 seconds 
and the S wave is 34 seconds. Here is for seismogram B for Cagayan de Oro. The hypothetical P wave for Cagayan de Oro is 10 seconds. S wave is 44 seconds. For seismogram C for Puerto Princesa, the hypothetical P wave is 14 seconds and the S wave is 64 seconds. Once you have the measurements for P and S waves, calculate the log time. Record the measurements in the table. Lag time is equal to S wave arrival time minus P wave arrival time. So for Batangas, 34 seconds minus 8 seconds is equal to 26 seconds. For Cagayan de Oro, 44 seconds minus 10 seconds is equal to 34 seconds. And for Puerto Princesa, 64 seconds minus 14 seconds is equal to 50 seconds. Using the log time for each seismic station, compute for the distance of the earthquake from the seismic station. The distance is equal to D equals log time times 100 kilometers over 8 seconds or lag time divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. 8 seconds is used because it is the interval between the arrival times of P and S waves at a distance of 100 kilometers. So for Batangas, 26 seconds divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers is equal to 325. For Cagayan de Oro, 34 seconds divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers is equal to 425 kilometers. For Puerto Princesa, 50 seconds divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers is equal to 625 kilometers. Next, convert the distance from kilometers to centimeters using the scale 100 kilometers is equal to 1 centimeter to get data in smaller units for the triangulation. The formula for distance in centimeters is equal to kilometers times 1 centimeter over 100 kilometers or 1 cm divided by 100 km. So for Batangas, 325 times 1 cm divided by 100 km is equal to 3.25. For Cagayan de Oro, 425 km times 1 cm divided by 100 km is equal to 4.25. And for Puerto Princesa, 625 kilometers times 1 centimeter divided by 100 kilometers is equal to 6.25. Now let us draw a circle around each station using the distance of the earthquake in centimeters as the radius.
Find the point where all of the three circles intersect. That point is the estimated epicenter of the earthquake. So in this activity, here is the epicenter. Why would geologists need seismic data from three seismic stations in order to calculate the epicenter of an earthquake? Geologists use triangulation to find the epicenter of an earthquake. When seismic data is collected from at least three different locations, it can be used to determine the epicenter by where the three circles intersect. Now you know! And that's all for our topic for today, I hope you learned something. And for our parting words, let me share with you this quotation by Martin Luther King III. Whether it is a tsunami, or whether it is a hurricane, whether it's an earthquake, when we see this great fatal and natural acts, men and women of every ethnic persuasion come together and they just want to help. Thank you for watching. God bless everyone. Till our next lesson here in your science classroom. Stay safe everyone. See ya!